Hello, my name is John, and I am the singer from the Mountain Goats, and uh, we are going on tour. <laughs> and I was making up the set lists. Uh, we do two, I do two master lists, uh, is how, how set lists happen. Uh, uh, and I give them cute names, like the Swiss Icons was a couple tours ago was one of them. I forget what the other one, the Swiss Icons was. And then we never used them. I just, I, I, those are, that's how they exist as documents, right? And, uh, and... And then I consult them to make the set list every night, uh, which I draw up and, and always shake them up some so that it's not uh, the same thing every night because there are some people who uh, see multiple shows on a tour and that's like such a huge honor for me to, to you know, to be the singer in a band that uh, whose, whose listeners know that if you come see two shows on two different nights, you can get experiences that are different enough to make it worth the drive, you know, so... Um, that's a that's a point of pride for me. Um, so, so yeah. So I was uh, I was looking at the set list, getting ready to do that, and it, and I thought you know uh, I was in the habit of making videos last summer, and I kind of got out of that habit because everything else had been busy with uh, editing my uh, my book, which is now through the first copy edit. And uh, but that's a different subject. Um, and yeah, and I was looking through stuff, and I thought, uh, why don't uh, why don't I talk about uh, the record that's coming out that we will be touring, the Mountain Goats dark in here and uh which if you haven't heard the story uh the original idea was to release getting into knives to 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 announce it right and do the whole thing where a single comes out and then at in washington dc on the first night of the getting into knives tour people would find out there was in fact a second album that we had secretly uh recorded and uh, and pressed up and I'm, i'll always be curious about about whether we would have been able to keep it uh a secret um we recorded it um, just as the pandemic was beginning, uh, the last week before lockdown. Uh, while we were recording, uh, South By was canceled. I think the NBA canceled their season during that week in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Uh, it was very, very intense session that made the, that was, <laughs> it's like, I like everybody else wish those days had been different in many ways. But it did uh, completely uh, harmonize with the vibe of the album, which sort of uh, the, the cover, resonates with it you know that's it is a it is a record full of, of inner darknesses and uh and so i thought i would just people are often asking me to talk about my creative process and then i and then i catch about the phrase the creative process or your creative process and i don't know why i mean because because like everybody else i like to find something to complain about and uh and that's one of my things is like i mean i don't know what else you would call it i don't have a better option so you know I should be quiet but uh <laughs> but instead, I go, what do you mean the creative process? It, because it's because I think of it as labor and calling it, nobody asks for somebody's creative process, you know, you're, you're in any other way except, to, you know, I, I'm always against setting the work of, of, of writing in some sort of um, uh, exclusionary of, of labor category. So, and, and I'll be doing a 12 part YouTube series on, 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 on that concept of writing as, as labor. It's gonna be uh, really exhausting uh, for all of us, uh, but, but that is not this. Um, this is about uh, uh, the, the, the title track for Dark In Here. I, I, I thought I would dig through notebooks. This is the, um, this is the, the Rodeo Queen notebook. This is sort of like, a, I have tons of these. I have a number of this particular one and then other ones by the same, company I just really like these I bought this one an age ago when I was out visiting friends in California uh, and uh, and I started writing down song titles in it I mean I bought it because I like the look of it it has the 1948 Rodeo Queen Marianne Mayfield Stephen the Colburn Bowl on the front and just something about that just really spoke to me and it's got these uh, it, it explains how to read brands on the back now I don't think branding is cool I'm an animals guy but but still I like knowing stuff like that right so um and uh and I can see, uh, oh, this is, <laughs> the notebooks are full of stuff that became stuff you may already like, and it didn't become stuff because God is merciful. So, for example, um, uh, on the first page, there's all these song titles, some of which have gotten used. September 15th, 1983, only existing footage, Lovecraft in Brooklyn, Wizard Buys a Hat, Stench of the Unburied, all those that got used. Uh, blunt instrument rag has not yet, uh, because obviously I don't know how to play a right rag time. But now that we have Matt Douglas, uh, you know I think, uh, <laughs> come on here, come on and cheer. 
a guy who has a blunt instrument. Some, I mean, that, that would be for an object, I guess. <laughs> Matt, we'll figure it out. Uh, put, put a pin in that. Um, the, the next next uh, page, uh, uh, a verse that I don't think I will ever uh, finish. Dicing shallots at the cutting board with a blunt knife. This is my whole life. <laughs> I like that one. I don't think I'm going to do it, though. Um, uh, and then the next thing that happened was a song called September 15, 1983. Um, and I don't know where I was when I when I wrote that. And it's a bunch of verses that didn't make it. Uh, a bunch of bunch of creative process stuff. Um, and somewhere in here, uh, I just start new pages of song titles every so often. I write them down. And some of them get made, and some of them don't. Um, there's the original draft of what became Possum by Night. Possum bit the watering can. A true story. Um, uh, there's the new hybrid collection is in here actually. Um, somewhere in here. Is dark in here. Oh man. And also here's evil priest scene, which I haven't gotten to yet. It, it seems a shame. Uh, shame on me. But uh, but yeah, dark in here was in a notebook. I thought it was this one. Maybe it's not. Um, but before it was dark in here, it was called The Orchard After Dark. I just found this morning. I was going through other notebooks trying to get stuff together to talk to you uh, at an incredibly fast clip. I don't blame anybody if they. I, does YouTube have the thing where you can slow down the speed? If, if like podcasts have, I, I don't, I don't know. Cause I can't, cause I couldn't do that no matter what, but, but with me, you have 100% my blessing to do that. Um, so, um, so yeah, I found, uh, in this notebook, the thing that says cauldron is a sticker. I forget where I got it in the notebook I bought in uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, and, uh, during a time when most of the songs from the last two albums were coming out at a, serious clip uh, sort of how things work with me is sometimes I'll just sort of be on and then I can wake up and work and I it's a blessing um to have that it can also feel pretty <laughs> I become a little incompetent at living otherwise during those times but uh but yeah so I was looking through stuff I was looking to find where's the where's dark in here what I found was this right and you can see this is the orchard after dark I was like I don't remember where I got that title from at all um, but I also noticed if you heard Dark In Here on the live stream show or if the album's leaked, I don't think it has, but if it has and you've heard it or whatever, uh, you know it's in D minor. Oh, D minor, we're feeling very ominous and sad and scared because of D minor, right? So, but, uh, but originally, no, it was A flat, right? A flat, we're feeling pretty, we can feel all kinds of different ways. Unlike D minor, absolutely set in stone. <laughs> It's like, I still don't, you know, uh, people who know more about music than me will say, look, a minor chord is not inherently this or that. It's how you deploy it. But, you know, I, I hold to my, my childish conceptions of D minor. How is that not sad? Of course that's sad. So, but, uh, but yeah, so I looked up the original demo, which I would play you now, but it's in the same phone in which I'm shooting it in an app called Studio Mini. So I listened to it and retaught myself how the original chorus, and this was all that was in there, um, is the chorus and then a different um, a different bridge line that never got used. Um, and you'll notice uh, somewhere there's this modulation here. I don't know if you can see this. And then it says a note to myself, no, it's in E major, which as we know, I did not wind up uh, uh, heeding my own uh, admonition there. Uh, I don't know what this whole C-sharp minor BAE stuff was, um, but... Uh, but the original was it was it was much more of a corners gambit kind of vibe and it went uh, let's see men whose ribs are showing through their skin bringing up the rear it's high noon somewhere it's dark in dark in here and that is all that exists of the uh, original demo it, it apparently from the title it said like the orchard after dark second or something like that which is usually how i annotate things to say that there's another but it looks like i deleted the previous bits there is one um there was one other bit of chorus that doesn't survive 
when the song actually gets written, which went, uh, I haven't actually sung this one this morning, so I wish me luck. Once, oh, once I burned my fingers, swinging from the chandelier. The lights were blazing, it's dark in here. It's dark in So it was like a sad song of of, uh, of, of demise, and uh, and then the next thing that happens. And, oh yeah, Orchard After Dark continued on the next page, uh, but then the then the lyrics take a, a much darker turn, um, and it looks like the first line that I that I got of the new direction was tired of running, tired of never standing still, and then it, you know then it's I don't remember this. This stuff kind of happens in a frenzy, um, so I sort of have to excavate the process by, by looking, but. Um, but I, I can tell by looking at it, it's like, oh, okay, that was the first line I thought of, and I thought, well, that's a, that's a hunted sort of feeling. That's not this sort of reflective, you know, that thing I'm just playing now, that's a very, it's very Elijah, it's a reflective thing. And uh, by the time it gets to D minor, by the time the Orchard After Dark goes to D minor on the next page, it's much more focused on on, on, on being hunted and, 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 and on, on, on some situation that is not sort of a, an after the disaster situation, but a prior to the disaster. I do think this record, dark in here by the mountain goats. <laughs> I do think this record largely is about uh, sort of uh, 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 the, the disaster, not a particular disaster, but, but the, the, the notion of sort of a of crisis or disaster and, and, and what it looks like from either side, which is something I've been thinking about ever since reading and not fully understanding Maurice Blanchot's The Writing of the Disaster back in the 90s. He's a theoretician guy. Uh, originally, one of the working titles for the Quarter's Gambit was Blanchot. I was counseled against calling it that by friends. Um, so, uh, so yeah, by the time it gets to D minor, uh, I, I, I go from, from making the first line, t line tired of, of running, tired of never standing still, to steal away at sundown find a place to hide, which I changed to pick a place to hide. And those are sort of changes that make a big difference to me. Um, and that's the point at which, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but at which the redactions and the, and the revisions become considerably fewer, right? There's a few lines that get scratched out where, you know, be ready for them when they come becomes, no, be ready when you come. There you go, that's a much better, better line. Um, you know, uh, stockpiled weapons, get my bear. It looks like it was gonna be bearings and then I, I stopped that. Uh, I can't read with the next one. Prepare for battle, no. All that's crossed out. Um, but short of that, it sort of then just comes out. Um, and I'll play the first verse and then be done with a John on process. <laughs> just, just, what? What, I mean, no one can tell anybody how to write. <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's, it's just, it's sort of, it's, it's like describing, you know, how I breathe. The way I breathe can't help you breathe. <laughs> but, uh, but, but check it out. Uh, if I can, I haven't actually practiced this this morning either. But let me see. No, it's not G. What is it? Through 
this game. What is it? There is a chorus to this song. I should edit this, right? I should do that, but I'm not going to do that. That's not really my... Oh, it goes to the five. Men whose ribs are short through their skin, bringing up the rear. Oh, there it is. Yeah. It's hiding somewhere. That's why I'm sitting here with a guitarist, so I can learn to play this song, so that I can play it uh, without uh, without having to stop and ask myself, why does it say D minor F G A times two D M two there? I have to figure this stuff out. Um, so please join us uh, on the. This is going to be an occasional series, I think, until uh, until tour actually happens. Um, so uh, so yeah, I can't wait to see you. Um, I hope everybody's. Uh, having as little trouble as possible getting vaccinated and, uh, and, and coming through the second shot if you get it. Uh, uh, clearly, I know Moderna shot number two was a bear for me, um, uh, but uh, it barely get up, but, uh, but now I'm fully vaccinated and it feels amazing. Um, uh, it really does. It's, uh, we have been through some stuff together collectively. Uh, I hope, I mean, I hope, uh, and it's hard to hope, right? But I hope that we learn to think more collectively in response to what we have been through collectively. That would be a lesson that would make some of it, uh, that, would, that would give value to the experience of this pandemic. Um, that's as serious as I want to get this morning. I, uh, August 3rd, Asheville, North Carolina. That's where, that's where the Mountain Goats tour is starting. I won't have this guitar. This one's not... Uh, not, not amplified. This is a, I think I've probably talked to you about this one before. This is a, a Guild M20. Nick Drake is holding one on the cover of uh, Brighter Later, but it's generally agreed that it's not the guitar he played on the sessions. Uh, we'll talk more about guitars next time. Okay, bye.